Very good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we continue with the video, be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel. Plenty of reason to stick around if you're a lover of all things weather. Uh, the summer forecast was obviously released back at 4 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. The live stream uh, had an in-depth look at dissecting of the ideas and the uh, explaining the verdict and the reasons behind that verdict of slightly warmer but also slightly wetter than average for the June through August period. Now, incidentally, I have got a couple of additional um, add-ons to this forecast. There is a little bit of tweaking here and there, not necessarily the overall idea, but uh, trying to add in a little bit more information for you to check out so you can check that out on marfoganweather.com there is a link in the description below today's video but i've also added in the prospects of the influence from the madden julian oscillation so obviously i made mention uh, quite specifically about the uh, potential very active tropical atlantic hurricane season this year and also what influence directly or indirectly that may have on the European pattern remains very much to be seen. But I've also added in the a new section here, relevance of the MJO or the Madden Julian oscillation and uh, what prospects that may have, uh, not only in enhancing tropical activity in the Atlantic uh, as we move towards the heart of the hurricane season, which typically isn't until August and September, by the way, but uh, I've also added in the potential of influence on the the European pattern as well, because when you enhance activity over the Atlantic, uh, Africa, as well as Europe, it also can have a like ripple effect from tropics towards the pool. So there is going to be another few days of tweaking here, and they're adding bits in, and uh, I would encourage you to check that out if you're interested in the meat and bones of the forecast and the reasons behind certain ideas that I have. So check that out. It is freely available for you to uh, uh, well check out uh, anytime at your leisure. So the Julian oscillation, not a particularly great indicator at the moment. We are in phases four, which correlates to enhanced convection between Australia and Japan. So we are increasing thunderstorm activity um, across the this region of the world at the moment. So a, a lot of sinking over the, the majority of Central and Eastern Pacific, the Americas, Atlantic, and our part of the world. When you have that enhanced active phase over uh, phase four and five, so, uh, so you get the overall idea, generally speaking. And uh, what's interesting, if you look at the projections, uh, real quick, I'm, I'm only going to glance over this because uh, I'm wanting to look at other aspects in today's video. But you can see here that generally speaking, uh, the month of June looks relatively favorable for for tropical activity in the Atlantic. When you've got greens over the Atlantic, you've got rising air generally. Well, when you've got the, the orangey colors, you've got sinking air, so Indian Ocean and the Pacific uh, with greens between the Americas, Europe and Africa here. So it looks as if the CFSV2 is enhancing activity over this region in June. So I would not be surprised to see uh, a few systems in the month of June. As we move into the month of July, we've got um, a large scale uh, enhanced uh, upward motion, Africa, Indian Ocean towards the maritime continent here. We've got large scale sinking over the Americas here. What that would constitute is a robust westerly African monsoon um, enhanced uh, wave activity across the equatorial portions of Africa, uh, possibility of a of favorable conditions to kickstart the monsoon season within India, possibly even Southeast Asia as well, but a large scale sinking over the Central and Eastern Pacific and the Americas. That is the atmosphere beginning to show more of a La Nina base state, by the way. And then into August, we've got very favorable conditions for not only uh, wave activity across the equatorial region of uh, Africa, but also that extends west into the uh, the Atlantic Basin as well. So this certainly would suggest that the, the CFSV2 is um, creating a favorable environment for enhanced tropical activity and productivity over the Atlantic um, as we move 
into the month of August with widespread sinking over the Pacific Ocean representative of the La Nina. So, um, and I'll also make a, a slight example here about how the various phases of the MGO can correlate to um, a particular type of weather pattern over the Atlantic and over Europe here. This is a little bit more relevant to winter, but uh, nonetheless, it can have influences in the warm season as well. So, however, phase 7, 8 and 1 can enhance tropical activity between Africa and the Americas, but also uh, blocking over or near Greenland, leading to cooler, wetter UK and, and near continent. Phase 4 and 5, which we're in at the moment, but this is what I'm saying. I'm going to get to this in just a second, why it's not correlating particularly well at the moment here. Phase 4 and 5 tends to bring warmer, drier weather to eastern North America and western Europe, including the UK, when you've got um, enhanced activity over the Nino region 4.5. That led to quite a lot of warm spells and correlated quite nicely as that MGO rotated through phases four and five during the winter season, we had quite a lot of milder than average conditions uh, for Eastern North America and Western Europe. The This is what where it, it, it isn't correlating particularly well at this moment in time. Now the Arctic Oscillation is weakly entering negative territory it's very neutral at the moment as you can see here and it's entering kind of weak negative territory but if you look at the north atlantic oscillation and this is something that i've been looking at in recent times it's it's sending the nao quite deeply negative now remember also in the summer forecast i made uh, the question uh, quite quite notable does the Greenland block, does the northerly block, and that we've seen primarily for the last 12 months, continue into the upcoming summer season? That is going to be a very important question because that is going to lead to further south uh, displaced jet. We've got dry conditions over eastern Iberia, the Mediterranean basin, so you would tend to correlate that to um, a, a boost in, in atmospheric pressure over southwestern Europe. When you've got a block over Greenland and the North Atlantic and a block essentially over southwestern Europe that tends to lead to a negative in between and that can quite often point to a storm track pointing at the UK and Ireland as we move forward. Prime example of that uh, is the spring just gone, the spring of last year and the summer in between actually uh, seen a very similar 500 millibar pattern here. It's all in the forecast and you can check that out both the live stream on Sunday past and the, the written forecast on the website. So Plenty of uh, material for you to be able to look at uh, at your leisure. But the NAO negative, uh, as you can see here, as we step into week one of June, and that correlates to this upper air setup. So it's, it's shown quite nicely that negative NAO in the GFS ensemble. This is the upcoming seven day period. And you can see here that we're generally leaning towards higher pressure to the west, lower pressure over the near continent. As you can see, we've got a negative over Greenland here. And we've got a negative over the central North Atlantic with a, a ridge in between. But as we move towards day 6 through 10, which is essentially week 1 of June, and you can see here that that pressure is fairly flat and flattened out. If you notice here, it's kind of elongated, stretched out between Canada and uh, Europe here. So a fairly westerly flow, essentially, based on this 5-day mean 500 millibar pattern. But then as we move into day 11 through 15, you can see how that high shifts westwards towards the North Atlantic and Greenland. There's your classic negative NAO signal here based on the upper pattern. You've got a negative over eastern North America with a ridge in the west. And you would essentially expect to see more of a negative over the UK and Ireland here with this textbook Greenland block, North Atlantic block signal. And if you look specifically at Europe, this is the uh, upper air setup seen by the model here. So if we just kind of play through the animation here, instead of going to the five day increments, this is a uh, day one through five. So you've got the negative over the near continent. You've got the ridge to the west here, somewhat a relatively uh, undescript temperature profile to start the month of June and summer, obviously. This is day six through 10. I did say that I would play through the loop, didn't I? So let's actually do that. And you can see here, as we play through the loop, you notice here that the high tries to exert its influence on the UK and Ireland. 
still got kind of neutral heights over central and southwestern Europe, indicating the continuation of this very unsettled pattern. So we are going to step into the, 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 the month of June quite unsettled across central Europe, I think. But as we play through, watch how the high starts to shift towards the west. And then you've got a trough kind of trying to show its hand over Scandinavia. I would expect that to drop into the UK and Ireland here. And basing on this, we have got close to average temperatures. So this is the day 12 through 16. Obviously a long way out, so there is going to be fluctuations in the model. But you notice here that we've got slightly warmer than average conditions across particularly the northern UK, uh, closer to average further south. Notice here that we've got lukewarm conditions across the majority of the continent. Skip back to day one through five. Underneath the trough, you've got cooler than average conditions over the near continent, but also across southern UK, slightly warmer than average conditions further north, if you notice here. Play through the animation, and you can see here that we have got uh, marginal temperatures very close to average as we step out of May, meteorological spring, and into June, meteorological summer. Precipitation-wise, this is quite important. If you're looking for drier weather, it's been a wet May once again, following on from uh, the majority of the spring and the winter gone. And it looks as if we are going to start off the month of June on a drier than average note here. As that high over the Atlantic tries to exert more influence, notice here how it's quite wet still across Central Europe. As we play through this loop, it looks as if the dry theme maintains itself all the way out to the 13th of June, seen by the GFS Ensemble. Let's have a quick look at the CFS V2 weeklies and see what it's indicating. So in terms of precipitation anomaly first, wet across the heart of Europe, week one. In the week two, it looks as if we have a turn to drier conditions across Central Europe, but also across the UK and Ireland. Firmly drier than average, if you notice here. Then as we move towards the middle of June, it looks as if, or the 18th through the 20th, 25th, which is a long way out, obviously, it's turning wetter, if you notice here. But uh, nonetheless, that's quite interesting to see. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar pattern here. Week one, you can see here the high to the west, a uh, weak negative over the near continent. Week two, again, that kind of stretched, elongated uh, ridge of high pressure here. So that kind of sniffing at that phase four and five MJO, by the way. So this is it, fourth through the 11th, and then the period between the 11th and the 18th, hence why it's showing slightly wet in average conditions. We've got a trough now showing up to the southwest of the UK and Ireland here, largely above average heights across the UK and Ireland, but that negative to the southwest would indicate weather trying to move in from uh, the southwest up towards the UK and Ireland, possibly thundery conditions, etc. etc. Finally, two meter temperature anomalies here for week one. You can see here largely close to average, slightly warmer across Scotland, definitely cooler across uh, France, low countries, and uh, you know the kind of southern uh, part of Germany. Week two, below average temperatures. So this is the 4th through the 11th, and then it looks as if it warms up between the 11th and the 18th of the month here. So, um, so yeah, rather interesting stuff. Keep it right here on my channel. And I will continue to look at this pattern as we go forward. Incidentally, these are the current European temperatures. Very, very warm conditions across northern Scandinavia in recent times. Quite the east-west divide. Now, you have got warm, probably the warmest conditions of the summer, actually, or the season. Sorry, not the summer because we're not there yet. But the season, warmer than average conditions. And the warmest of the season so far across southern and central Spain with temperatures in the mid-30s. We have got relatively fresher conditions across Central Europe, the UK and Ireland, but very, very warm conditions across the east. We'll look specifically at some of the temperatures that we've seen in recent days in Scandinavia in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned for that. Like, share and subscribe. See you tomorrow for more. Bye for now.